I remember he was the ugliest baby I'd ever seen. I know some men talk about how it was so emotional and wonderful, but I just remember a lot of sweating, bodily fluids, and moaning. Not just me. And then this ugly, wrinkly little thing being there. We named him Albert after Sandra's dad, but we all called him Bert. Really suited him. Perfect name, such an old man. We never chose that name for either of the other two, it just wasn't right, but from the moment he arrived we knew it was his name. Perfect name, such a funny guy. And he always was a, a very old soul, even from a young age, very particular about what he ate and wore. He didn't like bright colours or kids TV, pop music. Not like the other two, the typical boys, always wrestling and playing in the dirt. Loud, messy, physical boys. But we play with them. And he, did, he didn't want to get caught up in their drama or violence. He, he would sit and watch them, but he, he didn't join in. And when they were running around screaming or pulling things out everywhere, I'd catch her indoors watching the Time Team or 24 hours in A&E or reading poetry. He really was a funny bit of boy. Very particular, different, special. I'm sure some people might have described him as odd or peculiar, but I thought it was wonderful. He was so certain of who he was, you know, so sure of himself. And he didn't care for anyone else's opinion. And that was such a strange and strong characteristic for such a young child to have. I guess I was slightly more of him. He seemed to have characteristics that I didn't, well, haven't yet cultivated. It's amazing how many children I have. I don't know if you had children, but they change your life so much. <laughs> they really are the best thing. It certainly helped me to grow and, and want to become a better person. There's a change of perspective on everything, you know. Everything else just becomes so insignificant. You know? The moments that I was afraid of or that would overwhelm me have now just become unimportant. Because I've realised what is important and that's my boys. I had no idea how much I would love being a dad, how much I wanted to give and love these human beings to what lengths I'd go to protect them. As a dad, as a parent, it's my job to do that. That's my, my, my role, you know, that's what I have to do. To help these young humans grow, to keep them healthy, to you know, teach them things, to, to help them reach their potential, to keep them safe, protect them. But that's the thing, isn't it? You, you can't protect them. Not from everything. You try your best, you no sharp corners on furniture, cleaning products in locked cupboards, teach them to cross the road, stick up for themselves, blow on hot soup, all those things to keep them safe, but you, you can't keep them safe from everything, can you? No one tells you that. I did my utmost. I did my duty as a dad, I did all those things and more, and yet none of it mattered because it's all a lottery. It's all a game of chance, and you never know who has the luck or when it's going to run out. When Bert was diagnosed with cancer, there was absolutely bubble all I could do about it. I had no, I had no control. I felt so helpless, incompetent. Complete failure as a dad. And yet I was the one who had to hold it all together. You know? <laughs> hold the family together, be the strong one. I couldn't cry, I couldn't tell anyone how I really felt. I couldn't scream, which is what I wanted to do at the doctor's cancer in the world. I couldn't do anything for me. I had to I had to be there for everyone else, you know, suck it up, hold it in, put my feelings aside. be the cook, be the hospital liaison, be the taxi driver, bloody everything. I 
his arm had just broke and it was left to me to pick up all the pieces. I had to do it all on my own. Because cancer doesn't just affect the person who has it, it affects a whole family, a whole community. So everyone was affected. But I'm a part of that family. I'm a part of that community, and yet it was as though nobody realised it had affected me. I used to drop the boys off at school, and I had mums come up to me in tears asking me about Sandra and the boys. You know, same thing at work, and I had to comfort them. <laughs> People forget that men have feelings too, that we need a space to talk and be understood, be comforted, be validated. All those things that I was to everyone else. I just want to say I, I'm really glad that I found this group. And I just want to say thanks to Keith and Barry for setting it all up and giving us a space to share. I really don't know what I've done without it. I don't even want to think about what would happen if I didn't have this group for support. And I, I want to thank you all for listening and sharing. I mean, we're one of the lucky families. And Bert got through it. We all got through it, just about. It took three years of treatment, but he's in remission now and he's getting better. But things will never go back to the way they were. We're all changed by this. And I know now that I can't protect them. I can't keep them safe. Something could happen at any time. And as a man, that's really difficult for me to accept because we're always taught to fix things. But now I know that I have to, I have to save myself. I have to fix me. That's my way of helping because if I'm not able to hold it all together, then the whole family will break. And this place really allows me to safely offload the burden, so thank you.